If we aren't grown through the body and touch is the first sense that is developed in the womb, then how is that going to change human hardwiring? How is that going to change the brain? And will we need machines to vie for our affection? My name is Lucy McRae and we are in the world of Future Kin, which is a speculative world where human life has been grown in a laboratory without the body and future kin is a provocation on what that world would look like living in this world where we have been grown and not born. This advanced genetic engineering scenario is so that we can design human life from scratch. What I'm suggesting is that human life, that new hybrid species that can be made from several different DNA that this new breed of human life are called future kin. What I try and do with my work is build worlds where audiences and visitors can become the protagonist in that what if world. In this environment, it's looking at science through the lens of sport in a way. It's sort of hinting towards a sports court scenario. By building a world or a set, hopefully it lets audiences become a character in that world, imagining whether they would or wouldn't like it. The three machines that are here, Heavy Duty Love, Compression Cradle and Future Survival Kit, are all machines made for life that has bypassed the womb. And each machine is hugging the body. So they're all compression machines. Whether that's a push button where you can dial up the strength of a hug, or whether it's on roller skates, and the wheels push in and you get compressed in a vertical manner. Uh, they are all likely what if scenarios, would this be a sports and gym scenario? Would these be machines that are found in your home? Will intimacy be developed through products like these machines outside of the body because we have not gone through the evolutionary way of coming into being, which is through the body, onto the mother usually, and all the messy stuff that comes from giving birth in that way, this likely scenario could be that you could have a kid brought to term in four years time or 20 years time. There's no need for it to be brought to term at nine months because there is no body. The compression Cradle piggybacks existing technology. It's using a vacuum cleaner and a kid's blow up fan in the belly of the machine and it is activated by solenoid valves and a switch that would be used by um, a visitor that would be approaching the cradle. And you can dial up the strength of the hug, the time of the hug, you can have it tighter or looser, and that activates electronic gates that either allow the vacuum to pull or the fan to blow. What is happening is that the body is being hugged at the same pressure all the way around the body, which is not a sensation that a human could give you. However, the feedback that I've got is that it feels human, even though it is mechanical. What I enjoy doing is dis disrupting, in general, disrupting markets, disrupting themes. And what I've been doing with all of these three works is also trying to incorporate materials that wouldn't normally be shown perhaps in a domestic environment, in upholstery or in, a, in, a, in an art gallery, so to speak. And so Heavy Duty Love incorporates camping and construction materials that are normally seen in the back of a car or underneath a carpet and really bringing industrial materials to become physical or tactile, which in a loose way perhaps talks about the mechanical way that human life would be born and that perhaps industrial materials would feel more familiar, even though they're tactile, to, to life that has been mass produced in a way. The way that I talk about CRISPR is in very simple terms because it is extremely complex. So if you imagine a pair of molecular scissors, tiny molecular scissors that can go in and cut, edit, delete DNA, and you can 
remove, you can replace, you can replace it with superior, intelligent, athletic, superhuman traits. And so this is really advanced thinking around genetic engineering. But when the show opened, the Guardian released an article about the likelihood of exogenesis birth in 10 years time. So even though this technology is terrifying and thrilling at the same time, I think it's really important that we talk about it because we have learned that as humans, we submit really easily. And so I believe that the, the way that science and technology is just exponentially innovating, we need to be careful that we don't all of a sudden just end up in backed into a corner and be accepting of these ethical codes that have not been talked about in a public arena. And I agree that the way to innovate and pioneer is to experiment and to take risks. But I think that taking risks when heartbeat and human life, flesh, blood, psychology, the mind is involved, we need to be really careful with how we uh, test and experiment. So in a way, art can be a Petri dish where we throw all this stuff in there and see what happens. Like what happens if we throw in these different elements? And I guess this is one scenario of if we throw this stuff in, how it might look like. What I've really enjoyed about the responses that have happened here at Futurekin are the existential questions that we start talking about. Like, when is the soul born? Is it conception? Is it programmed through the fetus? Also, what is soul? What is spirit? And these questions are coming out of Futurekin and I love that we're having these awkward, unanswerable, impossible questions. Even if they are devoid of CRISPR technology, just to be talking about those types of pursuits and truths of what it means to be human. I've noticed, particularly in the kind of tech startup world, there is this real mission for biological perfection. Let's remove human weakness, let's remove all the vulnerabilities and let's just make these perfect human beings. But for me, what makes us human are our weaknesses, our vulnerabilities and the kind of failures and mistakes and what we become by overcoming those things that we, we want to remove, but purely by virtue of experiencing failure and mistake, you, you experience the world differently after that. And so would you edit in vulnerability into life? And so this world is really suggesting imperfection be strength rather than weakness. There is a certain element of alchemy that plays a role in the way that I make art, to trust in doubt trust in the unknown, that uncertain realm, and how can that, by cultivating or captaining this uncertainty, how could that pioneer new aesthetics, new stories, new thinking? And so that takes a lot of trust, it takes a lot of risk, and it takes a lot of practice. I'm not answering problems. This is not about problem solving. The point is to ask impossible questions, but to also hopefully bring in all walks of life, all cultural backgrounds and thinking, and to have their grab in the future. What do all these different people think about this technology? Because it will change human evolution forevermore.